I'm gonna show you how to build two square cedar planters just like this in less than an hour. Follow along to get a step-by-step -step guide on how to build these. First thing for this planter that we need to do is get the frame all cut up. So I have my cut list ready to go. That's really the only thing I actually make a cut list with these planters for um, is the frame. After that, I kind of just measure and go along the way just because things do change. The wood is different thicknesses, blah, blah, blah. But anyways, so I'm gonna start cutting up my frame and then we're gonna be ready to start putting it together. <laughs> Now that we have all the parts cut, we're going to start drilling the pocket holes. Now for the pocket holes, I use the Craig jig. You can use all different things, but this is what I prefer. Now you want to make sure the drill bit is set up for inch and a half. Uh, with this jig in particular, I don't have to change anything on here. It'll automatically adjust it for inch and a half, but the drill bit is a very important part. Make sure that's set up for inch and a half. Now that the pocket holes are all drilled, the next step is to start putting the frames together. For putting these frames together, you're going to need some two and a half inch pocket screws, a square drive. Uh, I like to use a eight inch block for figuring out where my uh, rails are going to go. So I have to measure everything out. Uh, and of course, some glue. So we're going to get started with that. Uh, so I'm going to take my leg, put that out first, grab one of the rails, put some glue on there and start screwing them together. One thing that may make this easier, depending on your ability, um, is if you grab a clamp and clamp, clamp down the side to the rails, uh, that will hold everything in place for you. Um, I did that in the beginning. I don't really need to do that for these. Um, they line up pretty good as is. All right, this is the first frame. I'm making two planters, so I'm gonna have four of these. Now with the pocket screws, one thing that I will mention, you should get the ones that are exterior grade, uh, especially in this application since these are planters that will be outside. Uh, it's definitely gonna ensure that everything lasts longer and it's not gonna rust. Now that I have my four frames put together, I'm going to take my pocket screw side, flip it over. I want that to be on the outside of the planter. So when I put my cedar on, it's all gonna be covered up and hidden. If you have it on the inside, now the dirt that goes in there is probably gonna get in those pocket holes. A lot more chance for mold, mildew, and all that stuff to happen uh, just because it's getting in the nooks and crannies. Plus from an appearance standpoint, it just does not look as good. I'd rather hide them, bury them underneath the cedar, and call it a day. So now we're gonna be putting on the other rails that are gonna connect the two sides together. So again, you're gonna put your pocket screws to the outside. Now, every once in a while, when you are pocket screwing these, you will hit the other screw. Um, if that happens, uh, what you can do is either try to move the screw over a little bit or just drill a hole through the outside of the frame uh, and just screw it in manually without the pocket screw. And you'll know if it hit because all of a sudden your piece will start rising and the screw will not go into the wood any further. Now, once you have your four rails on, you're gonna apply glue to all four of the ends. Put a decent amount on there because the end grain is gonna suck it right in. Now again, pocket screws are gonna be facing up towards the outside. Get your first side lined up. I start with the top corner. And then essentially just kind of work your way around with all four screws, getting everything lined up as, uh, as well as you can. And there you have it. Here's the first planter frame. Now that I have the frames built, I'm gonna start working on the outside with the cedar. So I'm gonna measure up the length all right, so we are at 22 and 7 eighths. So I'm gonna cut uh, four boards for each one at that length, and then we'll measure again after those boards are added on for the opposite sides. Even if you have a guide, you always wanna double check it, uh, just because over time it will adjust. Uh, like right there, it was off by a 16th. So I need to double check that, and it looks like that is right on. All right, we have some of our sides cut, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test fit it, make sure that everything fits on there properly. So I usually just check one side. If that one side is good, usually everything will line up pretty good. All right, and that lines up perfect. I use glue when I put the cedar on. Some people say that it doesn't hold up very well just because the cedar is very flaky. I disagree, but it's just what I prefer, and it's all personal preference. I use brad nails to hold everything on. Um, I just feel like if I don't use the glue, it's not gonna stay on there very well. You could use screws as well, but I don't like the appearance of that. And then I use inch and a half brad nails. I start from the top to get everything lined up. That's kind of my starting point of what I want everything to reference off of. 
Um, that's going to be my constant because I'm going to have a frame up on top or a railing up on top, so I need that to be as flat as possible. Alright, now that I have my two sides on, I'm going to take another measurement, see what that is. I'm going to measure in a couple different points because the thicknesses do vary. Uh, and I'm going to go from the widest point out. So let's see here. Two and three. Two and a quarter. So it looks like 24 and a quarter is what I'm going to go off of. So I'm going to cut those boards and then repeat this step all over again. Same process. Put some glue on here. Now that I have all four sides on the planter, uh, this next step is not necessary, but I prefer to do it to make it look nicer. Uh, so I'm going to use a flush trim bit, and I'm going to go across and take off any excess from that cedar boards going across, just because the boards are not perfectly flat, they kind of wave in and out, so I made the boards that went on top of them a little bit longer, so I can flush trim it and make it look perfect. So one thing about a router, if you're going to have it this way, sitting on top of the piece, typically you're going to want to go left to right. If you have it upside down, like you're using it in a table, then you're going to go the opposite way, right to left. It all has to do with how your router bit spins, and this is just how it works for the majority of routers. Uh, if you go backwards, you can go backwards to take off some excess. If you have a ton of material taking off, be careful because your router could take off like a rocket ship. Uh, but in general, if you're holding on to the router, you almost always want to go left to right, just as if you were writing with a pencil. Next step for the planters is putting the bottoms in. Now, quick side note, if you wanted to dress up the legs, you definitely could. In this case, the customer did not want that. This is how they wanted them to look. Um, but Next up, we are going to be putting in the bottoms. So for that, we're going to take a measurement on the inside. Now, the inside dimension is about 23 inches. We're going to want to take off about 3 eighths, so that way there's room to maneuver that bottom on the inside. And when we're putting these bottoms in, we do want a gap in between each board, so that way any of the water and moisture that is in there has a way to get out. So the inside dimension is 23 inches, so we're going to cut our boards to 22 and 5 eighths. These bottoms should slip in pretty easily. By having that 3 eighths gap, it makes it so they fit right in there. So as you can see, I'm putting a little bit of a gap in there. Uh, it does not have to be perfect, and if you want to create a jig to do it, you definitely can. Um, so as you can see, it looks like I have about three inches or so left over on the side, so I'm going to cut a board down to make that fit. Perfect fit. All right, now that we have everything in place, everything is you know, pretty close to where I want it, I'm going to go in and I'm just going to put two nails in the, each side of the boards. All right, so last step is going to be the railing on top of these boxes. Uh, I'm going to make them approximately two and five eighths because I can get the board split right in half and not have any waste. And uh, I only have to make one cut, so it literally works out perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make approximately a quarter inch, maybe really five sixteenths of an overlay on each side. So just to make math simple, I'm going to take the inside dimension, uh, 20 inches. I'm going to subtract a half of an inch. That gives me a quarter inch on each side for the inside to 19 and a half. I'm going to cut the first four boards at 19 and a half, and then I'm going to measure off for what the last rails are. All right, so I have my boards cut to 19 and a half. We're going to put some glue down and nail them on. Now you're not going to want to run the glue all the way across because these boards are not going all the way across. If you remember, we measured to the inside, so just run your glue across. There's going to be the cut side and the rough side. I always put the rough side out because I think that just kind of fits with the appearance of a cedar planter box. So now I'm going to get it all lined up and get it as close as possible. You can measure, but I'm usually pretty good with my eye for getting it figured out and getting it accurate. And I'll tack it in with two nails. Um, once it is finalized, and I, I might have to bump it around a little bit, I'll put one more nail on the end middle. Now you may be wondering, why am I not mitering the corners? Because that looks a lot better. And I agree, typically that would look a lot better. Personally, for exterior projects, I don't like miters. Uh, with all the expansion and contraction that wood already does, now throw in the extra moisture, the sun, the snow, everything else that happens, that miter is gonna look like crap in a very short period of time. So I'd rather have butt joints. Uh, it just, I think it looks a lot better. If the crack is off at all, it's not as noticeable. So I have my boards on there. Now I'm gonna measure off this way. All right, looks like it's gonna be 24 and three quarter.
Those boards are all cut to width and length. Same exact thing, gonna put the glue down. Now, you can test for this ahead of time.